Alright guys, so we're here in the shop. Uh, I'm going to kind of go through the wheel choices for the uh, 76 Impala today. I'm going to kind of explain a few things. So we're going to start with the wheel and go all the way on through the construction assembly, detailing, and then we're going to give a little educational information. We want to give everyone as much lip as possible on all their wheels, but there are other components of the wheel that change how big your lip is, um, whether you're trying to clear brakes, trying to get the right fitment on the car. Um, so today we're going to kind of go through all that and we're going to give you an in-depth look on how you should correctly measure your wheels so you get the right thing the first time. Um, so we chose the GS44 for this build. It is a brushed face, polished accent, clear coated finish. Um, pretty much everyone's running something like this these days. It's pretty much the new go-to. Uh, we do all the boutique style powders here, but we kind of wanted to keep it, you know, original looking, um, smooth and classy, so we thought this would be a nice look for it. Uh, and the car's kind of got that vibe with the, the light blue that I think will work really good with the brushed and the polished. Um, I was thinking about doing some gold or something like that, but I just didn't think the car was the right color. Um, so this is kind of what we're going to show and uh, this is what we're going to use on it. So this is a reverse center. Um, we are going to actually, it's going to be slightly smaller in diameter um, to mount on a specific area of the rim called the drop center, which is what helps you get your tire on, that gives you that giant lip with that little itty bitty offset in the back to narrow your rear end and get that look that everyone wants. Uh, so we're doing a 26 by 10 reverse is what this is called. We're also going to build a 26 by 10 with a standard backspacing and we're going to show you the difference what the reverse lip where you requires modification to your rear end so you can't bolt up stock like that. We're going to show you the difference in lip and what makes the wheel different so you guys could more so understand how this works. Um, so I'm going to hand it over now to Horacio. Horacio is my assembler over here. He's a certified tech who does all the welding, aligning, and make sure that your wheels go together the right way. Um, and he's going to show us how it's done. Dropping it down over right now, like we can already see that no lie, I'm pumped because I haven't seen it put together yet. But the lip on this bad boy is gonna be pretty awesome. So just seeing this right now makes me know that the, all the hard work that's gonna happen with the rear end narrowing, those bare brakes are gonna look killer behind this too. Man, I can't wait to see him get put on the car. All right, so now he's got it together, right? So it's barely shrunk, but there's friction fit. You can see how tight it is already because the air is cooling down the rim. He's gonna come over here. He is now putting on some gauges, right? They're gonna measure to make sure that the center is straight in the wheel so that it's not wobbly like such. So the gauges are gonna tell him if it's centered or not. If it's not centered, he's gonna run this really loud hammer. Just like that. So now we just move this wheel over to the other fixture here and we're gonna do the uh, final run out test. He's gonna spin everything and just make sure it's perfect. So we're looking uh, pretty good. What is that? What is that, 20 or 10? Uh, 12. 12? 12, 15. Yeah. So we're right there between 12 and 15. So you can see the range of movement. That's what we're saying, it's not moving more than 12 to 15 thousandths from when it hops to here to here. So basically you're just making sure that the uh, the rim is straight and finally correct. The lateral, right? Yeah. Yeah. Show me the other gauge, Kevin. So, so when you guys call up and say, hey, you know, my wheels 
are, are giving me like a run out issue or something and we, we don't get a ton of calls but you know we check all these things before a wheel leaves our shop to make sure that you're getting a wheel that is true so you know when the guys call me and are like oh well I have a tire and wheel that won't balance um, you know a lot of times did the wheel shop clamp too hard on the back side of the wheel when they're putting on the tire uh, and cause a bend or, or something of that sort? Because we check to make sure, number one, that the rim's not bent, um, and we check to make sure that everything is straight before it goes to the welder. Uh, accidents do happen. Maybe one could be missed. As you can see, it's a single process per wheel that goes through the shop, so I guess I'd say that's very hard. But we try to give everyone the utmost in quality and make sure that we check all of their products before they leave our building. So now Horacio is going to let this guy cool over here on the rack, and then we're going to show you how we weld them together. The whole process of assembly is now complete. Now I'm gonna kind of show you guys a little bit of difference. Um, so we have the reverse wheel, which is what we're gonna go through all the work for to put on the car by narrowing the rear end, um, maybe a little bit of frame modification, and so on and so forth. Now this would fit that car stock. So literally put a tire on it, bolt up and go. Um, you can see the difference in the, in the lip of the wheel. There's quite, quite a bit more, probably two and a half or three inches on the reverse versus the non-reverse, which will fit a stock car without any modification is, is, is this setup right here. Um, so they both look pretty phenomenal. Honestly, I almost like this one a little bit better for the simplicity of install, but man, this sure looks sweet too. Um, so it's kind of a toss up. So these wheels are now gonna get detailed. Uh, obviously we're gonna put the reverse on there. So uh, I'm gonna take them, get some tires mounted and we're gonna get them on the car. But before we do that, I wanna show you guys a little bit what makes a reverse a reverse and why we call it that. So to make a reverse, the center begins a little bit smaller. So if you look at this one, the center starts here and look at this one, the center starts here. The diameter on the non-reverse is actually a little bit more like center look, like the center piece is bigger. So if you really look comparatively and you look close, you can see the difference. So the reason it's gotta be smaller is because it's welded on this hump. This hump is called the drop center. The drop center of the wheel is actually a relief, if you show them up here, where it's designed when you put the tire on, the tire falls into this groove to help it get up and over. This is the drop center. Um, to get this huge lip, we weld it on the drop center. As you can see, it's welded right here. Now we're gonna flip this one around. I didn't weld this one because we're gonna take it apart, but if it was to be welded, it was gonna be welded in front of the drop center. So you could see the difference in both wheels. All right, so everyone wants a seven inch lip, right? We wanna give you a seven inch lip, but that is actually not how to explain the wheel to us to get you what you want. We need the measurement from this surface to the back of this, this to this. That's called your backspacing or your offset. The lip absolutely has nothing to do with it. If you guys are gonna tell me you want a five inch lip, well that's great. 
There's 500 different variables. Five inch lip on a 10 inch wheel. Sure, that, that takes more out of it, but it's not true. The thickness of this right here, this part that's the center, we call it, is different on every manufacturer's wheel. The thickness of this, the pad, for different brakes, you wanna put big bear brakes on a car or something like that, you might not be able to have this short pad. It may come out to here, okay? So if you wanna maintain your offset and the pad gets taller, the center of the wheel has to push forward and that changes the lip. So the lip cannot be a measuring tool on how to fit your car for wheels. I'm gonna go grab a tool here in a second. We're gonna show you how to properly measure your backspace. And then we can tell you, A, how much lip we're gonna give you in a build specialties wheel based on how much caliper we have to clear. Or B, we're gonna show you a measurement form where your, you or your builder can look at that and give us measurements we need so that we could properly provide you a wheel on your car. Now, if you're gonna make the, the wheels fit, like the reverse, right? The reverse is a wheel that we're gonna make work. So you bring these to your chassis shop, they make them fit, it really doesn't matter. We're here to give you one thing and one thing only. We're giving you this, we're giving you a giant lip and a look that you wanna get. The chassis guy is gonna put him under the car with the tires on him, he's gonna measure it and he's gonna make it perfect every time. Here, we grabbed an extra wheel that's a customer's. Um, I kinda wanna show you, I was pointing to these pads when I was talking about lip and, and what changes it. So see how thick this is? Right here, this thickness to this thickness. That's added in there to, to give you different clearances for calipers, for your brakes, to get around your brakes so that the back of the spoke here doesn't hit the face of the caliper. So when you're saying lip, this is another factor that changes where this centerpiece is sitting in the wheel. So the taller this pad is, the more forward the center has to go, which reduces your overall lip. Now this is a 12 inch wide, 24. So like, you're still gonna have a ton of lip on it, okay? And they must have a giant break in the back is why they ordered the pad like that. But if it was a shorter pad, so if this was cut down, you could further move this center backwards another half inch and give you another half inch of lip. So there are a lot of variables that determine the lip or what we call it here is front space. So the space from the end of the wheel to the, you know, to the back pad, that's your front space. And your back space is from the back of this pad to the back. So front space is from here to the front of your rim. Back space is from here to the outside back edge of your rim. So the lip or front space um, is determined on many factors, not just, hey, make the lip seven inches on the front of my wheel and I'm gonna make it fit my car. Well, we do that a bunch of times and it doesn't work because the pad height's different, the thickness of the center's different, among other things. So just to kind of show you guys when we tell you, well, we can't just go off lip, this is why. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys how to measure backspace right now. So whenever you call, we're gonna ask, well, what backspace do you want? Or what offset do you want? Backspace, offset, kind of one and the same. You could do it a couple different ways. We make this really fancy little tool here. It does the same thing as this yardstick that you could buy at Home Depot or Menards or anywhere else, or you might have one and a tape measure. So to show you how to measure it, we are gonna put the wheel face down. We're gonna do it with the tool first, all right? So what you're gonna do is we'll unscrew this, lay it edge to edge, let this drop. Okay, so the measurement we're essentially taking is here to the flat of this. 
So that measurement is five and an eighth. So this has got a five and an eighth inch backspace. That's it. Now, if you don't have one of these fancy tools, you're gonna take it, good old yardstick, which is gonna get you close enough. You're gonna take your tape measure and you're gonna see that it's roughly five and an eighth to the bottom. So you're always gonna measure from this to the bottom edge of this. So stand it up, five and an eighth. Pretty simple, um, couple tips. It has to sit on the metal. It cannot sit on the lip of your tire. If it sits on the lip of your tire, the measurement is going to be wrong. It's gotta sit metal edge to metal edge from here down to the flat face that mounts on your hub or rotor. Okay, it must be flat on the metal. All right, thanks for watching. series so let's take a look so they seem to have gotten the motor out getting that all taken apart gonna replace the brakes so uh, I know Ed told me that they're cleaning up the hood and they're gonna start on the engine compartment today and start going through the firewall a couple updates we hit up vintage air decided that we did not want to use the original AC system uh, the guys over there helping us out they're gonna send us a full setup. Uh, we're utilizing some components from a 70 Chevelle through them um, to get an air conditioning system on this car that's a little bit more updated and modern. Uh, it's going to clean up all this stuff here on the firewall as well. We're going to put on one of our Billet Specialties 4 port bulkheads um, and smooth that out to make it look nice and neat. Um, as far as the inside, they are taking apart the dash Getting ready to do our column accessory kit, do some rewiring, swap that AC, and uh, we're also gonna be using some Dakota digital gauges to bring that up to a little bit more modern standard as well. So it looks like the project's kinda going full swing, not much of an update this week. Um, I guess plans on, we're gonna be cleaning this up, we're gonna respray the engine bay, clean up the cross member of the frame rails up here. Um, I think it's gonna go like a flat chassis black. The rear end's gonna have to be narrowed, so we're gonna, they're gonna set that up and get it measured. And then after that, they're going to have to put a couple small notches in the frame from my understanding. Either the frame's gonna have to be notched completely, or we're gonna have to do a small triangular cut in order to clear the wheel. All right, so we're also dropping the trans off. Uh, so we decided to do a automatic four-speed overdrive new technology things uh, so we're doing a 4l80 trans um, it was built by dynamic motorsports um, they're actually more of a converter company but they do some transes so if you're looking for a custom converter they do all these super fancy billet jobs uh, where you could pop the cover on and off and then change out the inner workings to adjust your stall speed as well so the converter is super overkill for the car um, it's a 100% billet steel unit, which is probably not necessary, but they wanted to showcase what they do. Uh, and I'm pretty uh, good friends with those guys over there for a really long time. So they helped me out with the trans. Looks absolutely beautiful. Um, it's got some upgraded clutches and, and, and certain small components inside, as I didn't need to go crazy with it because it's only like a 520 horsepower build. Um, but looking pretty forward to getting that four speed automatic in this car, something with an overdrive, good cruising RPMs on the highway, um, and really check out the uh, functionality of their converter. I mean, it's a 2800 RPM stall. Um, it's a beautiful piece. So uh, interested in getting back with you guys, uh, we'll post a link on where you could check out what they make as well, and uh, go from there. Thanks a lot.